This is a level three lesson over the digestive system. This is part of human body step eight. Let's review the digestive system functions. The first thing that the, the digestive system needs to do is take in materials such as food. Another function of the digestive system is that it needs to get rid of waste. So any food that cannot be broken down into energy is waste for our body and it needs to be removed. The final function, and this is a bit wordy, so you can rewrite it. Um, our body has to break down food and it breaks it down into energy and materials that our body needs. So the third function is breaking down food to get energy and materials. Okay, now it's time to talk about the parts of the digestive system. Before we talk about the parts, we need to talk about two different types of digestion. One type of digestion is called mechanical digestion. And so this is when things are physically broken down into smaller pieces. So if you take a piece of paper and you rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it a whole bunch of times, you have used mechanical digestion, breaking something big down into smaller pieces. An example of this in the digestive system is when your teeth grind food into smaller pieces. Another type of digestion is chemical digestion. Now, if you took that piece of paper and you dissolved it in something like vinegar, it would eventually break down into smaller pieces. But notice that you didn't rip anything or break anything up. The chemicals of the vinegar would break down the materials. So just like the chemicals in vinegar, you have chemicals in your saliva and in other parts of your body. And these chemicals are called enzymes. And enzymes help break down pieces of big pieces of food into smaller pieces of food without grinding things. So an example is um, enzymes in your saliva will break down starches into sugars. So you should have experienced this with your saltine cracker. Now that we know about the different types of uh, digestion, we'll get into the different parts. So in uh, the first part of the digestive system is the mouth. And the mouth is responsible for grinding food into small pieces. You have your teeth to do the grinding. In your mouth, you also have saliva, and the saliva helps with the chemical digestion. It breaks down starches into sugars. That's why when you suck on a saltine cracker, it tastes sweet. The second part of the digestive system is the esophagus. The esophagus is a tube that carries food from the mouth to the stomach. We're going to talk about a few parts that have to do with um, the stomach. But before we talk about the stomach, we need to talk about the liver and the pancreas. The liver and the pancreas um, both add materials to the stomach and the, or sorry, the small intestine. So the liver produces something called bile, and this bile is then released into the small intestines. And the purpose of bile is to break down specifically fat molecules. So liver produces bile, bile is released into the small intestines, and it breaks, fat, breaks down fat molecules into smaller molecules. Your pancreas makes chemicals, enzymes, and these enzymes are used to break down carbohydrates and proteins. And this ha ha also happens in the small intestines. Uh, examples of carbohydrates would be uh, wheat or flour. Um, and then examples of proteins, you will find these in your dairy, in your eggs, in your meat, in your beans. So liver produces bile, released into the small intestines, breaks up fat. Pancreas releases, releases chemical, chemicals called enzymes, and they are released into the small intestines, but their specific job is to break down carbohydrates and proteins. Your stomach is a muscle, so it has smooth muscles on the inside of it. And these muscles grind food into small pieces. So there's your mechanical digestion. 
The other thing that di the stomach does is um, chemical digestion. And so you have gastric juices and hydrochloric acid, which are both found in your stomach. And they help break up protein molecules into smaller molecules. So your stomach performs both mechanical and chemical digestion. Let's talk about the intestines. Now, a lot of people think that the stomach is probably the most important part of the digestive system when really it's the small intestines. The stomach helps break down food, but it's the small intestines that really absorbs the food into the bloodstream. And then once the food is in the blood vessel, it can go to the cells for them to use. So small intestines is where the digestive food is absorbed by tiny finger-like structures. These finger-like structures are called villi. There are blood vessels called capillaries that surround the villi and absorb the energy and the nutrients. Once the energy and nutrients is in the blood vessels, it gets carried to the rest of the body. But you also have a large intestine. Your large intestine is large in diameter, so it's not the longest. Your small intestines are actually the longest. But your large intestine is very wide. And your large intestine takes materials that can't be digested, it removes water, and it creates feces. So the biggest role of the large intestines is to remove water. The final part of the digestive system is both the rectum and the anus. The rectum is an area that helps hold feces until you feel the urge to go to the bathroom. The anus is where the feces exit the body. And remember, you have smooth muscles in both the rectum and the anus to help keep the waste in there until you're ready to get rid of it. So let's talk about some interactions. I've already talked about some of them during the lesson, but let's get into some specifics. So your digestive system works with both your muscular and your nervous system. You have your brain, spinal cord, and nerves or neurons, which are part of your nervous system. And those are sending mus uh, messages to the smooth muscles in your esophagus, stomach, intestines, and anus. Remember that there's a part of your brain that is responsible for vital actions. And that part of your brain helps send these messages all the time to digest your food. Your digestive system also works with your respiratory and your circulatory system. I talked a little bit about this in the lesson. You have a trachea, lungs, and capillaries, which are part of the respiratory and circulatory system. The trachea carries oxygen into the lungs, and while it's in the lungs, there are capillaries that are on the edge of the lungs, just like there are capillaries on the edge of your villi of your small intestines. This allows for oxygen to get into the bloodstream or into the blood vessels, and it allows carbon dioxide to get out of the bloodstream or blood vessels and into the lungs. Now oxygen is needed in your small intestines to help break down that food that, that is absorbed and turn it into energy. So small intestines gets the oxygen from the respiratory system. The oxygen is carried to the small intestines by the circulatory system. And then the oxygen is used to create energy for your cells. The digestive system works with all systems to provide nutrients and energy for the cells. So the esophagus, stomach, intestines of your digestive systems system works with the capillaries of your circulatory system to give all the cells in our body the food and nutrients it needs to survive, to grow, and to reproduce. That was a level three lesson over the digestive system, human body step eight.